Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Wednesday, May 26th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So in today's episode, we have two new products approved by the FDA. The first is Empavelli, approved for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, commonly referred to as PNH and also the approval of Ribravant for a specific type of non-small cell lung cancer. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you get the drugs that interest you. Getting us started this week, the FDA has approved peg Cetacoplan, which goes by brand name Empavelli, an injection to treat adults with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, which is a rare, life-threatening blood disease. Empavelli is the first PNH treatment that binds to complement protein C3. PNH is categorized by red blood cell destruction, anemia, blood clots, and impaired bone marrow function. The disease affects 1 to 1.5 people per million. Individuals are typically diagnosed around ages 35 to 40. PNH can be serious with median survival of 10 years after diagnosis. However, some patients live for decades with only minor symptoms. PNH is caused by gene mutations that affect red blood cells. Red blood cells in people with these mutations are defective and can be destroyed by the immune system, which causes anemia. The effectiveness of Empavelli was evaluated in a study enrolling 80 patients with PNH and anemia who had been taking Solaris, a treatment currently approved for PNH. Patients first completed a four-week period during which they received Empavelli, 1,080 mg twice weekly, in addition to Solaris at their previous dose. After the first four weeks, patients were randomly assigned to receive either Empavelli or their current dose of Solaris, for 16 weeks. After 16 weeks, the severity of anemia was compared in the two treatment groups on the basis of hemoglobin concentration. In both treatment groups, the average hemoglobin was 8.7 grams per deciliter at baseline, indicating severe anemia. Normal hemoglobin values in adult men are 14 grams per deciliter or above, and normal values in adult women are 12 grams per deciliter or above. During the 16 weeks of treatment, patients in the Empavelli group had an average increase in their hemoglobin of 2.4 grams per deciliter. Meanwhile, patients in the Solaris group had an average decrease in their hemoglobin of 1.5 grams per deciliter. Empavelli is available only through a restricted program under a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy. Meningococcal infection can occur in patients taking Empavelli and can become life-threatening or fatal if not treated early. Empavelli may also predispose individuals to serious infections, especially infections caused by encapsulated bacteria. Patients should be monitored for infusion-related reactions. Empavelli can interfere with certain lab tests, And the most common side effects are injection site reactions, infections, diarrhea, abdominal pain, respiratory tract infections, viral infection, and fatigue. And also this week, the FDA approved amivantamab, which goes by brand name Ribravant, as the first treatment for adult patients with non-small cell lung cancer whose tumors have specific types of genetic mutations epidermal growth factor receptor exon 20 insertion mutations. Lung cancer is the most common cancer type and the leading cause of cancer-related deaths worldwide, 
with non-small cell lung cancer accounting for 80 to 85% of all lung cancers, according to the American Cancer Society. Approximately 2 to 3% of patients with non-small cell lung cancer will have EGFR exon 20 insertion mutations, which are a group of mutations on a protein that causes rapid cell growth and consequently helps cancer spread. EGFR exon 20 insertion mutations are the third most common type of EGFR mutation. Researchers evaluated Ribervant's efficacy in a study of 81 patients with non-small cell lung cancer and EGFR exon 20 insertion mutations whose disease had progressed on or after platinum-based chemotherapy. The main outcome measured was overall response rate in the trial population in which all patients received Ribervant. The overall response rate was 40%. The median duration of response was 11.1 months, with 63% of patients having a duration of response of 6 months or more. The most common side effects of Ribervant include rash, infusion-related reactions, skin infections around the fingernails or toes, muscle and joint pain, shortness of breath, nausea, fatigue, swelling in the lower legs or hands or face, sores in the mouth, cough, constipation, vomiting, and changes in certain blood tests. Ribervant should be held if patients develop symptoms of interstitial lung disease and permanently discontinued if interstitial lung disease is confirmed. Patients taking Ribervant should limit sun exposure during and for two months after treatment. Ribervant may cause problems with vision, and Ribervant can also cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman. Therefore, the pregnancy status of females of reproductive potential should be confirmed before treatment is started. Ribervant received priority review and breakthrough therapy designation for this indication. Priority review directs overall attention and resources to the evaluation of applications for drugs that, if approved, would have significant improvements in the safety or effectiveness of the treatment, diagnosis, or prevention of serious conditions when compared to standard applications. Breakthrough therapy designation is designed to expedite the development and review of drugs that are intended to treat a serious condition, and preliminary clinical evidence indicates that the drug may demonstrate substantial improvement over available therapy on a clinically significant endpoint. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.